students in last lecture we have studied about electrical conductivity specific conductivity and molar conductivity today we are going to discuss variation of molar conductivity with concentration concentration means molar conductivity uh, you will uh, as i told you it is anywhere concerned with uh, concentration of the solution now the question is there when the concentration of electrolytic solution will vary then what will be change in molar conductivity of that particular solution that we will discuss in this lecture uh, here i have written variation of molar conductivity with concentration actually friends you will have to understand that we are having two kind of electrolyte some are strong electrolytes and some are weak electrolytes strong electrolytes means which dissociate completely and the weak electrolytes means those electrolytic solutions which cannot dissociate completely that's why actually we know that the conductivity of electrolyte is depend on the ions and ions are uh, the uh, uh, produced by dissociation of electrolyte so the molar conductivity of strong electrolyte decreases slowly on increasing concentration what is that increasing concentration means uh, we are having two kind of uh, solutions one dilute and concentrated as the concentration will increase means the number of ions will increase due to which the pores will also increase in between them due to which uh, the molar conductivity of a strong electrolyte will decrease slowly means there will not be so sharp change on the conductivity while at low concentration the molar conductivity of electro strong electrolyte approaches its limiting value limiting value means the uh, optimum value means when there will be the low concentration means the solution will uh, you can say uh, dilute at infinite dilute you can uh, dilution you can say the uh, molar conductivity of a strong electrolyte approach its limiting value limiting value means its main optimum value why when we used to talk about the weak electrolytes weak electrolytes molar conductivity decreases sharply on increasing concentration but on decreasing concentration the molar conductivity of weak electrolyte increases firstly in slow motion means slowly and then after afterwards it increases sharply when when the concentration of particular electrolytic solution get decrease totally here i will explain you on uh, increasing concentration the molar conductivity decreases while when the concentration get decrease the molar conductivity get also increase right in weak electrolytes it increases sharply while in strong electrolyte that uh, decreases slowly this is the variation of molar conductivity with respect of the concentration now as i have discussed with you about the strong electrolytes and uh, uh, weak electrolytes there uh, is a great scientist who has given a law to explain the molar conductivity of different electrolytic solution you can see that we are having you know two kind of electrolytes one is strong electrolytes another one the weak electrolytes right how will we find out the molar conductivity of a weak electrolyte as they could not dissociate properly the scientist call raus has given a law to explain the conductivity of uh, any particular electrolyte what has he said 
about the molar conductivity of any particular electrolytic solution according to Carlos law the conductivity molar conductivity you know it is denoted with lambda m right molar conductivity of any electrolyte any electrolyte whether it is uh, you know uh, strong or it is the weak you can see the molar conductivity of electrolyte is equal to sum of all the ions of that electrolyte what it's very simple even uh, in theoretical language you will uh, if you will uh, write it it will take uh, two or three lines i have uh, written it in a very short form actually what he said he said that the uh, molar conductivity of any particular electrolyte is equal to sum of all the ion of that particular electrolyte uh, now we will have to discuss what are those ions whenever we will talk about any electrolyte just like i am having an example of nacl right in NaCl, whenever NaCl will dissociate, it will dissociate into Na positive and Cl negative. Alright, sir. According to this fellow, Ms. Colrose, what he said, he said that the lambda m, lambda m means molar conductivity of NaCl, molar conductivity of NaCl will be equal to sum of molar conductivity of this Na positive and the molar conductivity of Cl negative. According to him, each ion of that particular electrolyte have its own uh, role in that molar conductivity, its own participation. It doesn't mean only the cation is having its uh, participation or it doesn't mean only Cl. According to Carlos, whenever we will have any kind of electrolyte, its molar conductivity will be equal to the sum of its uh, conductivity of its cation as well as the conductivity of Cl negative. Just like I have given you example of NaCl, that's why I, I can uh, give another example just like I am having HCl, right? The molar conductivity of HCl will be, it will dissociate into H positive and Cl negative ion, right? Then its molar conductivity will equal to uh, molar conductivity of H positive ion plus molar conductivity of Cl at infinite dilute. We used to say at infinite dilute means the limiting value. Means very simple law has been given by Carlos, but its application is very important. Law is very simple. We can easily understand when actually we used to say conductivity of electrolyte is due to the ions of that particular electrolyte right here uh, Carlos said that the molar conductivity of any particular electrolyte is equal to the sum of uh, the conductivity of cation and anion now where can we use it what is its application what is the use of that particular law very simple I told you in uh, last lecture that we are having two kind of uh, electrolytes one is strong electrolytes another one weak electrolytes right sir a strong like electrolyte just like i'm having nacl right nacl is break down into na positive and cl negative nacl completely dissociate into na positive and cl negative so simply we can find out the similar conductivity i will have the total number of na positive i will multiply the uh, total number of ion uh, into that uh, the limiting conductivity of na similarly cl but when we used to talk about the weak electrolytes just like i am having ch3 c double o right it break down into ch3 c double o one negative plus h positive it could not completely ionize into its ions. How will I explain it that it is completely ionized and it is uh, not completely ionized? Suppose that I am having this NaCl as 50 gram, right? After dissociation, 
the sum of any positive and CL negative was also 50 gram. What does it mean? It means that complete NaCl has been dissociated into its ions. In case of CH3COH, suppose that it was 50 gram, right? After dissociation, when I measure the uh, mass of this CH3COH and H water, positive, it was not equal to uh, 50 gram. It was suppose that 40 gram, right? It means it is not completely ionized. So, this is weak electrolyte and this is strong electrolyte. Now the question is there, how will I find out the conductivity of weak electrolyte? There, uh, the Carlos law help us, how it help us, we will discuss in this, uh, through this numerical, right? I am having question, molar conductivity of HCl, molar conductivity of NaCl and molar conductivity of CH3, CWONA has been given and find out, find out molar conductivity of CH3, CWOH. Means in question the molar conductivity of HCl, uh, NaCl and CH3COONA will be given. Suppose that it is something, HCl it is 426.1 and NaCl it is 126.5 and uh, CH3COONA it is 91. Molar conductivity we do as a unit is ohm inverse 1 mm -hmm. centimeter square mm -hmm. mole inverse. This is the unit of molar conductivity, right? Now we will solve the, this numerical. We have discussed. We have discussed that the Carlos has given its law that the molar conductivity of any electrolyte is equal to the sum of its cation and anion, right? That molar conductivity of that particular electrolyte has been given something like this. And we are to find out the molar conductivity of CH3COOH, right? Firstly, molar conductivity of HCl equal to molar conductivity of H positive and CL negative, which has been given as 426.1 right similarly molar conductivity of NaCl will be molar conductivity of Na positive and molar conductivity of Cl negative it is 126.5 right similarly we are having molar conductivity of CHC C double O Na it will be molar conductivity of CH3COO and molar conductivity of Na positive, right? And it is something 91 ohm centimeter square per mole, right? We are to find out the molar conductivity of CH3COOH, right? What it will be? It will be the molar conductivity of CH3COO negative and molar conductivity of H positive. Right, sir? Now, we are having these information. Through these information, we are to find out the molar conductivity of this electrolyte. It is made up of CH3COO and H positive. We are having CH3COO in this equation. H positive in this. It means, suppose that I add this and this by adding this and this, I will get CH3COO and H positive. Means I will get this and this. But in these two, we are having one Cl extra and one Na. When we are adding this and this, you can see, I will get CH3COOH, but NaCl is extra. It means when I will add this and this, 
NaCl will be extra. That's why I can subtract from the sum of this and this, this NaCl. Simply we will find out CH3C double H. How? The lambda M of CH3C double OH will be equal to molar conductivity of HCl plus molar conductivity of CH3C double ONA. You can say easily. H is here, CH3C double O is here. Right? CH3C double O, H. What is extra? The Cl and Na. Subtract NaCl by it. Isn't it? When I will add this and this, CH3C double O and H will be there uh, one side and Cl and Na will uh, another side. That will be subtracted and I will get the answer of this CH3C double O. And that will be HCl we are having 426.1 plus CH3C double O and A we are having 91 minus 126.5. Easily we can find out the molar conductivity of CH3C double O. This is one of the uh, most important application of Colorado's law that it is useful to find out the conductivity of weak electrolyte. As I told you that the weak electrolyte cannot dissociate completely into its ion that's why it is <coughs> not possible to find out their molar conductivity individually that's why their molar conductivity can be calculated through the Colaus law in this way right sir next we will discuss on in the next lecture thank you very much